Okay, got the TDAE in the barn today, uh, my little dozer, and a piece of pipe, got some plate, of course the Cummins engine's still just sleeping over here, um, but anyway, what I want to do today is, this has always bugged me, this piece of plate that was on the blade uh, from the factory, that, that, they didn't even center it. They just kind of, it's like we got a scrap piece of steel. This is, we got a thousand of these left over. We're going to use them for that. Anyway, some people have used this to chain on to to pull the dozer out of the mud, I think, or something. But what I want to do is mount a, I want to build a mast for a laser receiver, which I ordered a new laser receiver. Should be here in a couple of days, I hope. I'm going to put it in the center this time because it's a lot easier to keep grade because when you're tilting the blade and angling the blade, it's pretty easy to be off one or two inches either way. And the, the new receiver I got is a, it's going to have the capability of Bluetooth to my phone, so I'll have a display up on the tractor. So even if I set it down low, I'd have access to see what's happening, I think. But I'm going to build the pole tall enough that I can maybe get up above the hood, um, at least above the hood. I'm not sure that it needs to go above the top. I don't think it does. Normally, you can set your laser up on the side of a job. And the one I'm getting is going to have 360 range, so that's a lot better deal. But I wanted to show you what I've, well, what I've got in mind, I guess I forgot to talk about it. What I've got in mind is to cut this plate off, just do away with this one, cut the hook off. Uh, this is made for lifting the blade. If you ever have to work on it, I believe that's why they put that on there. But anyway, I've got a piece of half inch thick by six inch wide plate. This is six buck. That might be a quarter. But I'm going to cut this plate off. And it has a gusset on this end. It has a, well, that hook is welded into the back of the blade. So I'll have to burn those out too. But I need to cut this plate off, clean the blade up. And I think what I'm going to do on the new one is I've been looking. And when dirt rolls over the top of the blade, it goes right down into the pivot. Uh, especially on this side. I've seen this side full of dirt. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to go four foot, which will put that edge of the plate out past this pivot. So it'll let that dirt shed over the back. It's been raining and thundering, and Roxy don't like thunder, even though she can't hear it. I think she can feel it or something. Anyway, she's, she's kind of acting nuts right now. Um, yeah, you're kind of nuts. We've got to let me get work done. i got to work. I, I can't just have you, well, I guess we'll do what we got to do, huh? Yeah? She's trying to get me to go back in the house. Uh, she was in the house a while ago, and she followed me out here. And then she's like, I don't want to be out here because you're just working. You're not playing with me. Anyway, dogs. Dogs. Not even my dog. Yeah. My daughter's dog. Yeah. Want to look at the blade up here? Want to come up and look? Yeah. Silly old mutt. Anyway, I gotta. I'm gonna torch this off, clean that up, make my new plate wider, and also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level that plate so that I can bolt that mast right in the middle of it. And my plan is to use this piece of inch and a half. Uh, this is inch and a half schedule 40 pipe. Should be about the right diameter for clamping the laser to. But what I want to do is make another plate for it that will, I'll probably drill and tap the piece that's on the blade so that I can just take a impact driver and four bolts and bolt this on. When I'm not using it, I can just zip the bolts out and take it off. I thought about using a hammer union on the pipe. I think that would work good, but I don't know if, I think the shaking and vibration probably would be hard to keep it tight. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna try to do. Um, that's my plan. 
So, a little welding today in the shop. And if I get around to it, I want to show you my buddy uh, Ty, uh, Tyler from Ty, sorry Tyler from uh, Lake Pines Farm. He has a TD8 as well, and he sent me this nice Donaldson pre-cleaner. And I was going to take it off up here and put it up there, but it's a little bigger than the old one. And since I'm going to have a since I'm going to have a center-mounted um, laser, I might want to be able to see it even if it's down lower. So. What I'm thinking is I might cut that down and I'll still be able to see over the top of the hood and over the top of this it won't obstruct any view. So it'll still be tall enough that uh, it's you know up off the hood but this should save a lot of cleaning air filters here. Anyway thanks for that uh, Tyler. He, <laughs> I think his name's Tyler. I hope I got that right. I'm pretty sure it's Tyler. Anyway, I got him in my phone as TD8 guy, and he's not the only one. There's probably, oh shoot, there's uh, there's becoming more and more guys that find my channel and they find the TD8 stuff, and then they contact me about TD8 things, so, and I think it's cool. We've got a whole gang of TD8 people. Anyway, the engine I rebuilt, transmission I rebuilt, this thing had like 300 hours on the meter, so I'm, I've only put 300 hours on it. Running good, working good. Um, needs new tracks next. Money pit. Dozers are money pits. Uh, for anybody that's never bought an old dozer or even a new one, uh, they cost a lot of money to upkeep, keep running, but so far it's been pretty dependable it's been reliable um not the most comfortable dozer to run it's open top but no more than i run it i mean you can see um that's not that many hours but these dudes will move a lot of dirt in a day i mean it's it's kind of unreal every time i take it out and use it it's like man this thing is it's deceiving its size and how much you can get done but um, pretty quick anyway that's another thing I want to do but you can see now this is in the view of top of the hood as well as the muffler the muffler doesn't bother me but if I were to ever get sweeps that'd be another thing to look through um, which I need to just build some probably I've been trying to find a set of the original sweeps and they're hard to find nobody wants to let go of them um, and I don't really want to buy another dozer just to have a set of sweeps so but anyway that's my thought on that is to is to chop this off this thing's welded on there anyway i think so if i cut this down a little lower um it still works um it will also well like i say keep my air cleaner and i'll be able to see over it better so Anyway, that's it. That's that. I'm just going to use a regular torch. I'm going to try not to cut into the blade, but the top plate, I'm not, I'm not worried about losing it. It's already bent up anyway. A little bit of a nasty well there, that's why it's backfiring. I think it might have some air pockets in it. And I've been going to buy me a air arc, or a arc gouger. I see Weld even told me which one I need to get, but I haven't done it yet, so shame on me, huh? I 
probably burn my shop down if I had one. Probably gonna burn the camera up. Set you guys up here maybe. Might be a better, better spot for you. Tip's dirty, that's probably one problem. Been having some weird weather this year, it seemed like we, I don't know that it's weird, it's kind of nice we've been getting rain. Tell you what, that tip is getting super hot. We might make, we might see about using the big scarfer. I need to get a scarfing tip for a smaller torch. But we can probably make this work. Quick connects are nice when they work right. Not so good when they don't. <laughs> like a lot of things, I guess. Anyway, um, I think I kind of got it set up backwards, so let's maybe I don't. Let's see how this works here. Good lord, that's tight. Can't even turn my valve on. That's why it's good to have a Leatherman with you. There we go. This torch uses a lot more gas. Hard to get it to clean up. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Might not work very good, but should.
Whoop, got a little beat. Cut around this hook now. Lost my gas pressure there. Came unplugged. Might need to get some new pins on this thing. Might need a better hammer than that. <laughs> Throw it on the floor, Frank. Well, there's part of it. Didn't quite get it all cut, did I? That was warm. That actually worked pretty good. Um, where I did it right. And what I mean by right was you can kind of see where I was blowing through the weld here. This is a torch and this is a scarfing tip. But where I was getting it right was where you can see the separation. I could see it. So I'd move forward when I saw the separation and that cut off pretty clean there. But then over here, I got a little deep. Anyway. One of the tricks to keeping arcs, sparks from sticking to your rods is to smoke them with uh, acetylene. It works pretty well too. You just blacken the rod up. Um, Sparks bounce off of it better. Covering it's probably more effective, but from what I've seen, it works pretty well. Anyway, since I'm leveling this up, there's gonna be some differences to be made. And one of them is gonna be, I'll have to have some kind of a gusset at the end of it. I don't think I'm gonna need one in the middle anymore because it's half inch plate. But I might. I don't know. I may guess at the middle. I'm not sure. We'll just see how solid it feels. It's thicker plate. Should be stronger. Um, with the with the tilt cylinder the way it is in there, you can't get much of a gusset on it because of the it moves up and down. So I guess I could put a bigger gusset. 
Well, my thought is put a gusset on each end and uh, probably call it good. And what I'm thinking for the lifting hook is maybe I'll just drill and tap a hole right in the center and then I can just screw in a rod eye or a, you know, a, a, a ramp, what do, they, what do they call it, a lifting eye. I can just screw it in there and if I need to lift the blade off. Um, anyway, I need to take the torch, probably blow a little bit more of that stuff off of it before I start grinding. I need to cut that hook off and clean everything up. Then I'll go to cut my plate. Like I say, I think I'm gonna make it four feet, which would put it out to here. And I'm gonna come out six. I may taper this. I may taper this corner just because I don't really want something that. There's a grease circ here. I want to have access to it, and then there's also a grease circ on this side. So that plate's gonna come out to here. It'll be a little bit harder to grease, but. You got to remember the plate's going to be level and there's also going to be space. I think there'll be space enough under there to grease it. Um, not covering the whole thing up, so I think it'd probably work. And yeah, that's kind of, hope this thing's working. I think it is. Um, but anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking is take a little grind into it, torch a little bit more of the weld off. Um, cut my new piece, get that thing on there. I got to quit messing around talking to the camera. Lots of carbon. So this here Jeff Anderson welding shirt doesn't really keep the sparks off of you very good. I thought these were supposed to be for welding, Jeff. I didn't know they were just t-shirts. So, thought just crossed my mind, I'm gonna have this big, nice, heavy plate up here and then somebody will hook a chain on it and bend it. Uh, better not happen that way. There's no reason to tie on your blade. I mean, I know I've seen guys do it, but 
they ain't made for pulling like that. It's better to use the hook on the belly pan, or better yet, if you can't get to that, wrap around the blade frame, the main part. There's just two pivots and a lot stronger connection. This here's on a pivot. It's got plates and things that can break. Um, I've seen these break out on some blades. I think Tyler said his he had to fix his right here. It started peeling off. I don't know if I showed you what I was. This part right in here, uh, his his started cracking. Um, so you know, it's just one of them things. Use common sense on stuff and don't do stupid stuff like like reach your excavator over here with the teeth and. I've seen holes in the backs of blades where guys have reached over and used the excavator to pull a dozer out. That's just dumb, in my opinion. I guess if it's your dozer, you can do what you want, but if it's mine, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna like that much. So anyway, rambling. So, Got to do some grinding. I'm gonna go get a different shirt on. This is not good for what I'm doing here. Not very protective. And I might need to trim a little bit more of that off there. But wasn't that a beautiful lifting hook? It's like they made this stuff out of scraps. I don't know if International built these blades or if they hired them done. I almost think they hired them done, but yeah, who knows. Might be how they built them back then. They're probably built better back then than they are now. This is a triple lot tip, I believe, and this is half inch plate. So preheat on thicker plate is pretty important for a nice cut. So as is a sharp tip, this tip is not sounding so sharp. Some of these tip cleaning kits don't have the right size tip cleaners for your triple lots, I guess. Seems like there's always one missing or a size that just almost fits, but not quite. Frustrating. That little one's too small, the next one up. Of course, I might have lost a couple out of this set. That actually sounds pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is just preheat the bottom side of this plate a little bit. It won't, won't need to be a lot. But it'll help. 
And I'm going to try to do this freehand. I probably should use a guide, but So I want to keep her tip parallel with the work, or perpendicular, I guess. Very slow and steady. Not too slow. Okay, I gotta stop. I had to reposition my elbow there a little bit, so. Well, I'm not Torch Norse, but it'll do. Not that great. To be honest with you, I'm out of practice. At least that's my excuse. So it's all right. Cleaned up okay. You can see right in here, I started having a little bit of an issue. Uh, this started out real good. And that's where I started my recut. I don't know what happened there. Maybe my, maybe my speed was off a little bit, but this is good enough for a dozer. So that's my four foot piece. I went ahead and sprayed some paint on this. I don't know why. because now it's got wet paint on it. But, <laughs> but what I've got to do, and I, one thing I'm checking is I want the backside of this flat on the blade perpendicular with this plate. So the, right now the blade is actually leaning forward just a little bit. And I've raised it up a little bit and it doesn't change that much until you get up a little higher. So, my thought is it should be at a 90 degree with this flat and this flat. It should be 90 degrees from that. And I think that's what I'm gonna try to, that's, that's what I'm gonna work towards. So I've gotta get this set up somehow to where I can uh, how to manage it, I'm gonna probably have to prop it up with something underneath. I don't know how it's gonna work, but. Also, I need to get a good mark off the front edge of the blade to keep it straight. I guess that would be the place to mark it um, from. I do have a couple of burned holes in the blade. Not too proud of that, but I'm not real worried about it either. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's going to weaken the blade that much. By the time I put this on there, it's going to be stronger anyway. So at least that's, that's the theory. So yeah. <laughs>